dear students in this session we will make a distinction between inside money and outside money inside money and outside money now the first major attempt to solve the problem the question whether money is an asset or not is done by garli and shaw in 1960 the question is whether money is an asset or not the money is an asset or not this issue was first attempted by garli and shaw and garli and shaw made a distinction between inside money and outside money inside money if we consider the private sector as a whole cannot be considered as an asset so inside money is the money which is not asset for the private sector as a whole on the other hand outside money is asset for the private sector as a whole so if money is an asset for the private sector as a whole it is outside money if uh, money is not an asset for the private sector as a whole it is inside money to explain the distinction between inside money and outside money we divide the economy into three sectors one is the private sector second is the banking sector third is the government sector we divide the sectors into private sector banking sector and government sector first we consider the private sector private sector consists of individuals denoted as alpha and firms denoted as beta private sector consists of individuals and uh, also firms individuals assets and liabilities of individuals is given here liability is bank loan asset is cash bank deposits government bonds corporate stock and physical capital similarly the balance sheet of the firms is given here liabilities are bank loans and corporate stock stock issued by the company assets cash bank deposits government bonds and physical capital private sector consisting of firms and individuals and for simplicity we assume that c beta is equal to c alpha that is the entire corporate stock issued by the firms is held by the individuals c beta is equal to c alpha now if we consider the balance sheet of the private sector as a whole we will get in the asset side mc cash mc alpha plus mc beta then mb alpha plus mb beta then b alpha plus b beta then c alpha plus sorry then corporate stocks c alpha if we consider the private sector as a whole asset side mc alpha plus mc beta mb alpha plus mb beta b alpha plus b beta c alpha then k alpha plus k beta 
in the liability sites L alpha baglone L alpha plus L beta and C beta baglone L alpha and L beta plus corporate stock C beta that is if we consider private sector as a whole cash consists of MC alpha plus MC beta government deposits consists of MB alpha plus MB beta then B alpha plus B beta then C alpha corporate stock then K alpha plus K beta in the liability side L alpha plus L beta then C beta in the asset side and also liability side if we consider the private sector as a whole. Now in this scheme an item that affects net worth of an individual unit need not necessarily affect net worth of the sector comprising these individual units. Let me repeat an item that affects the net worth of an individual unit need not affect the net worth of the sector comprising those individual units. This property is exhibited by corporate stock. As you can see corporate stock is an asset to the individual at the same time it is a liability to the firm and we assume that C alpha is equal to C beta. It is an asset to the individual but a liability to the uh, corporate. So corporate stock asset to the firm sorry liability to the firm asset to the individual. Now if we consider these together consider these together C alpha and C beta cancel each other. So if you consider an individual alone an increase in C alpha increases his net worth but here if you consider firm alone an increase in C beta increases its liability. So this corporate stock as they cancel each other will not affect the net worth of the private sector. Net worth of the private sector. So for an individual it may be an asset but when we consider the entire sector private sector it is not an asset because asset and liability will cancel each other. Now we consider we introduce the banking sector. Now we introduce the banking sector. Now for the banking sector as a whole if we consider for the banking sector as a whole assets and the liabilities for the banking sector assets uh, liabilities consists of bank deposits is equal to MB gamma bank deposits assets consists of cash MC gamma MC gamma bank loan L gamma and government bond B gamma. So for the banking sector we say that its asset consists of cash MC gamma, gamma is the banking sector, bank loan L gamma, government bond B gamma. In the, in the liability side bank deposit MB gamma. Now suppose that uh, bank deposit is 1000 of this bank loan is 500, 300 is 
kept in the form of cash. 200 is used for purchasing government bonds. For simplicity, we assume that banking sector's net worth is zero. That means assets is equal to liabilities, thousand is equal to thousand. Now we consider the nature of inside money. Private sector's balance sheet shows money as an asset. Money as an asset. Cash MC alpha, cash MC beta, bank deposit MB beta, bank deposit MB, MB alpha, MB beta. So, private sector's balance sheet shows money as an asset. A part of it is bank deposit. This bank deposit is MB alpha plus MB beta bank deposit. And it shows bank loans as a liability, bank loan, L alpha, L beta, L alpha plus L beta is a liability. Now banking sector's balance sheet shows bank loans as an asset, deposits as a liability. Now, the part of private sector's bank deposits banked by bank loans to private sector. And in our example, this bank loan, uh, what is bank loan? L alpha plus L beta bank loan. Let it be equal to L gamma. That is 500. And this, uh, this MB alpha plus MB beta is 1000. So, private sector's deposit is 1000. 500 is given back in the form of loans to the private sector. So, this part of bank deposit is inside money. Of the total 1000, 500 is given back as loan to the private sector. That part is inside money. But what about the remaining parts? This is inside money because bank deposit is matched by bank loans, asset is matched by liability. So 500 of 1000 is cancelled. What about the other cash and government bonds? So inside money is clear. Now in contrast to inside money, outside money affects private sector's net worth. Outside money is an asset to the private sector that is not offset by liability of the private sector. To in introduce the concept of outside money, we introduce the liability of the public sector, liability. Now we introduce the government sector into the model. Uh, government has no assets, only liabilities. No assets, only liabilities. It consists of MCG, that is cash. MCG cash and BG that is bond. So what is outside money here? <coughs> government uh, MCG cash and government bonds. And uh, uh, government bonds as you can see is held by individual banks and uh, sorry individual firms and banks it is not offset by uh, the liability of the private sector so it is outside money similarly private sector's holding of cash that is mc alpha and mc beta is outside money 
is outside money. That, that is the holding of cash by the private sector is, sorry, this, uh, this uh, uh, what you say, this is bank is not introduced. We consider inside money, outside money for the private sector only. So private sector's holding of cash is outside money. If government issue more currency, it uh, increases the currency holding of the private sector. Also, so B, uh, alpha, and, uh, and uh, what about B, gamma, and uh, so B, gamma, and MC, gamma? But that is bank deposits. Bank deposits owned by private sector is outside money. Bank deposits, uh, that is, uh, one part is MC alpha plus MC beta. It is outside money because it is not, a, it will not offset each other because it is cash, it is the liability of the government. What about uh, B gamma and MC gamma? This is the cash held by the bank deposited by the private sector, not offset by liability of the private sector. So this is outside money, cash. Government bonds, that is B gamma is also outside money. So MC gamma and B gamma is outside money. Cash held MC alpha and MC beta is also outside money. So let me say inside money consists of private sector's holding of monetary items that do not contribute to net worth. On the other hand, outside money, those monetary items when held by the public contribute to net worth. So when we consider the private sector as a whole, well, if a monetary item contribute to net worth, it is outside money. If not, it is inside money. That is it.